Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is solving absolute value equations, and this is called Module 2, uh, because we've already looked at solving a few simpler absolute value equations. We're just going to be looking at some more difficult ones, uh, as well as quadratics. Uh, so in the previous lesson, what we looked at was solving algebraically and solving graphically. To solve algebraically, just uh, to recall, we isolate the absolute value expression, we solve the equation for when the absolute value expression is positive and negative, and then we must always check our solutions in the original equation. As far as graphically, we isolate the absolute value expression, graph the function represented on both sides, and then the solutions are the values of x where the functions intersect. Uh, there's some limitations. You'll see that as far as solving graphically because uh, you may not be able to graph one of the functions or they may not be on integer values so that you can only estimate. All right, we're going to solve a few of them. If at any point in time you'd like to pause the video and just try solving one of them yourselves, go for it. I think we're going to do three of them in total. Um, right on this first one, what we're going to do is solve it algebraically. And the first thing we need to do in order to do this is isolate the absolute value expression. So I'm going to subtract 3. I have 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 2 is equal to negative 10 divide by 2, and I'm going to be left with the absolute value of 3x minus 2 is equal to negative 5. At this point in time, I can actually inspect that there's no solution, because the absolute value of an expression has to be positive, and it can't be negative 5, so there will be no solution. If you uh, couldn't, didn't identify that originally, what you could do is actually go ahead and try and solve both of these when the absolute value expression is positive and when it's negative. You could solve both equations. Uh, you would get solutions for them, but after you check them, Uh, you'd find out that there's actually no solution, so that it actually wouldn't work out. Uh, so there will be no solution anyways. As far as graphically goes, what I'm going to do is graph these two functions right here, one highlighted in uh, blue and one highlighted in yellow. So I'm going to graph the function uh, y is equal to the absolute value of 3x minus 2. First, I'm going to graph the non-absolute value. We've looked at graphing absolute value functions uh, in previous lessons, but here is what that graph would look like the non-absolute value uh, graph anyways. And as far as what we need to do to it, we need to reflect all of the negative outputs on the x-axis. So it would look more and it will reflect on the uh, at the x-intercept. So that side would look like that. And as far as your other graph, it would be y is equal to the right-hand side, negative 5, and y equals negative 5 is simply a horizontal line that passes through uh, the y-axis at negative 5. So what you can see is that these two functions don't intersect whatsoever, and that's why there's no solution. Okay, uh, let's look at another one. First quadratic one that we've done so far. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is solve it algebraically. I've already started uh, completing the square process for solving it graphically just to save some time. All right. So the absolute value expression is already isolated, so we're going to solve for when the absolute value expression is positive. So I'm going to solve this equation here, and I'm also going to solve for when the absolute value expression is negative. So negative, the opposite of x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Okay, all right, uh, let's go ahead and solve them and check our work. This first one, what you want to do is make one side equal to 0. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides, subtract 4 from both sides. And at this point, I have x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. And that can be factored uh, to x minus 2. x minus 4 is equal to 0, which gets me solutions of x equals 2 and x equals 4. Let's go ahead and check that really quickly. I'm going to uh, skip some steps in the checking. Uh, if I check 2... I'm going to have the absolute value of 4 minus 16 plus 12 is equal to negative 4 plus 4, or is equal to 0. And we will get, in, case, in fact, that the absolute value of 0 is equal to 0, which works. If I check 4, I will end up getting the absolute value of 16 minus 32 plus 12 is equal to negative 8 plus 4. Uh, so what we're going to find here is that the absolute value of negative 4 is equal to negative 4, which is not 
true. So 4 will not be a solution because uh, the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. All right, let's do this next one. First thing I'm going to do is distribute the opposite sign in. So negative x squared plus 8x minus 12 is equal to negative 2x plus 4. So in this case, I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side because I like positive quadratic terms or positive x squared terms. But it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have 0 is equal to x squared minus 10x plus 16. This can be factored to uh, x minus 2, x minus 8. And we'll get solutions of x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 8. Uh, we've already checked 2, so we know 2 will be a solution. So let's go ahead and check 8. If we check 8, we're going to get the absolute value of 64 minus 64 plus 12 uh, is equal to negative 16 plus 4. So we're going to get the absolute value of 12 is equal to negative 12. That's not true. So 8 will not be a solution. All right, let's go and investigate. So our only solution in this case we know is going to be only 2. x is equal to 2. Uh, let's go ahead and investigate graphically how we'd solve this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and graph this blue function right here. So the left-hand side. I've already completed the square, so I'm going to graph it. It's got a vertex of positive 4, negative 4 and opens up in the typical uh, y is equal to x squared format. So it looks something like this. Okay. Uh, but we'd have to, since it's an absolute value function, we need to reflect the negative outputs on the x-axis. So there's what that graph looks like. As far as our next graph, I'm going to graph the uh, right-hand side, y is equal to negative 2x plus 4, and y is equal to negative 2x plus 4 is in slope-intercept form. It's got a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 2, so it looks something like this. Okay, so as you can see, uh, <clears throat> there is only one intercept. It appears that there would be one here, but since it has been its absolute value and it's been rotated or reflected on the x-axis, this is not a solution. So our only solution is an x value of 2. So x is equal to 2 is our solution. All right, let's look at one more problem. You may want to start this one or try it yourself. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and look at solving it graphically first. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this left-hand side which I've already started over here. I've completed the square with it. You can look at that process and pause that process if you'd like to. Uh, we have a vertex at positive 1, negative 1, and once again it opens up with the multiplier being 1 here. Uh, it opens up in the typical y is equal to x squared fashion. So it would look something like this. However, since it's an absolute value function, we would need to reflect that part right there. So maybe what I'll do is even erase these uh, just so you're more clear on where we're anticipating the answers or solutions being. Uh, the other side is simply just y is equal to 1. And y is equal to 1 looks like that. Okay, so we would anticipate having three solutions. We would have x is equal to 1. We would have x is equal to and you can only estimate, in this case it looks like it might be around 2.4 and also uh, x equals, we could estimate again, negative 0.4. There's the limitation of graphing, because if it's not an integer value, you can only estimate. So let's go ahead and solve this. Uh, we're going to solve, first of all, this equation here. x squared minus 2x is equal to 1. I subtract 1. I'm going to be left with x squared minus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. This is not factorable, so what we actually need to do is use the quadratic formula. So I'll write up here and remind you of what the quadratic formula is and put it into simplest form. Uh, so our quadratic formula, our solutions for x would be uh, the opposite of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1. Uh, all over 2 times 1. So it would be 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 4 all over 2, which is 2 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. And you could simplify that more if you'd like to. Uh, you'll actually notice 
<clears throat> that what that becomes is 2 plus or minus, and the square root of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So that pair of 2s can come out as a single 2. And this is going to be 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 all over 2. All of these parts, the non-radicands, uh, can be divided by 2. So we'd actually have 1 plus or minus root 2. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and leave that in our back pocket for now. Uh, what I'm going to solve next is the opposite of x squared minus 2x is equal to 1. So if I distribute that, I'm going to be left with negative x squared plus 2x is equal to 1. And if I make one side equal to 0, I'm going to bring everything to the right-hand side. We are left with 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. You could use a quadratic formula, but this is actually factorable. It's a perfect trinomial square. Uh, so this is x minus 1 times x minus 1, which gets us a solution of x is equal to 1. Uh, you could check all of these. In fact, uh, you'd have to check them in the original. If you checked 1, which you could try yourself, please do. You're always expected to check. You will find out that 1 works. Uh, to check these two solutions, because this represents two solutions, uh, 1 plus the square root of 2, and 1 minus the square root of 2, I would check with the decimal equivalent. It's a lot easier. Uh, so if I do 1 plus the square root of 2, that's roughly 1.4. Uh, oh, whoops, I put that in wrong. Uh, 1 plus, sorry, square root 2. That makes more sense. That's roughly 2.4, which it looks like that's about my estimate, actually. Uh, but 2.41 maybe, and maybe I'll also do 1 minus the square root of 2. That's roughly negative 0.41. I promise that when you check those two values, they both work. So our solutions in this case would be x is equal to 1, x is equal to 1 plus root 2, and x is equal to 1 minus root 2. Uh, you may be asked to have it in an exact value form, which is this value and not 2.41 and negative 0.41. I would just use those values for checking. It would make it a lot easier.